Alrighty, some honorable mentions from 2020. So last Saturday I did my top 20 of 2020 video and a lot of you were mentioning I left off things that um, you thought that I liked and of course I like a lot of these fragrances that I'm going to talk to you about today but in all honesty they would not fit in a top 20 list so I can't fit more than a top 20. I, of course I do some honorable mentions here and there but today it's a 20 list of honorable mentions that were you know great releases but just didn't make my top 20 so if you want to find out about these honorable mentions 20 of them actually 21 of them then please stay tuned Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. That's right, honorable mentions, and I'm gonna do this as fast as possible. Uh, I'm not gonna do a lot of introduction or anything, but these are honorable mentions. These are all great releases from last year. They just wouldn't make my top 20, but I wanted to give a shout out to these releases so you guys would find out about them. And then of course, check them out if you're so inclined to do so, if they sound great to you. So before I get to the fragrances, if this is your first time tuning into my channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. Let's get started. We're gonna start off right off the bat with this fragrance from the house of Roberto Greco. And this is Porter Sapo. It's a limited edition release. It's an animalic musky aldehydic floral fragrance. So lots of aldehydes, narcissus flower, loads of musk, patchouli, leather, ilang ilang, jasmine, hyrask, Hyrax, I said Hyrax. Hyrax is the animalic note in here. So in the end, it's a contrast of light notes with dark notes, uh, and the aldehydes adds this lightness to the fragrance. There's a big yellow flower uh, presence, uh, floral touches, I should say, of the Narcissus, which adds some sl uh, light smokiness to the fragrance. And then of course the Ilang Ilang adds some interesting, slightly tropical-esque touches uh, in the fragrance, but of course it's musky and it's animalic because it's got the high racks notes so if you like those kind of fragrances definitely check this one out i still have the the uh review up for this one with the giveaway i haven't closed it out we're doing three samples giveaway for this usa giveaway if you're interested in participating go check it out right away as i'm going to close that giveaway very soon so that's porter sapo from the house of roberto greco it's a limited edition release and it translates to wearing one's skin Try and visualize that. So next, go into the house of uh, Sarah Baker, and this is the S. Baker collection of fragrances. And I'm adding symmetry to this list, and I really, really enjoy this uh, oud fragrance. What I like about this one, you know, I don't think it's an, I don't think it's a natural oud. It smells more like a synthetic Western oud. But for me, what I like about it is its contrasts with the light notes. It's oud and cypriol, typically found in uh, fragrances featuring oud in the Middle Eastern styles, but they've added. Pettigrand, Neroleon Orange Blossom. So those notes are very, very fresh and citric and, uh, you know, floral touches. Uh, and it's a nice contrast with the darker notes of the Oud and the Cypriol with, with the fragrance. But there's also some bergamot added for citrus. And then, of course, some musk in here as well and some amber. I think it's a great release. It's under $100. I think it's a great entry-level Oud fragrance. It is 50 ml, so it is end up being pricier when you do the 100 ml pricing but if uh, you like supporting indie uh, brands and you are looking to, for an entry-level oud I think it's a great oud so that's symmetry from Sarah Baker next going to a house called Essential Parfums this is Devine Vanille that's what it is. Devine Vanille is a beautiful uh, gourmandish vanilla fragrance with a uh, tobacco-ish touches, vanilla, tonka beans, benzoin, incense, patchouli, cinnamon. What I like about this one, it does hint at a little bit of Herod by Parfums of Marley, and it's the same perfumer, so it kind of makes sense that it kind of hints at it. But they go in different directions. I think it's not very full-on tobacco here. The t tonka beans adds a tobacco-ish nuance with the fragrance, so it acts like a, there's a little bit of a tobacco thing happening here. But mostly it's a gourmand, which I really, really like. It's not sickly sweet, it's vanilla. It's got the tonka beans and the benzoin and that smoky slight touch of incense running throughout it, some spiciness of cinnamon. So it's a great scent. It's under $100 once again. So if you're looking for something that smells sort of hinting, hinting at Herod, but much better value than definitely Essential Parfums Divine Vanille is a, a great honorable mention from 2020. And speaking of Parfums of Marley, it's Greenlee. And here with Greenlee, 
I think it's a very happy fragrance. It's uplifting and just energizing kind of a uplifting vibe. So it gives me the very, very happy uplifting touches because it's got loads of um, apples. It's, a, it's known for the apples. Yes, it does hint a little bit at the, the kind of um, Aventus-like touches, but I don't think it goes there for me. It's just like a full-on juicy apple-y fragrance, which I really, really like. I'm enjoying this one, not groundbreaking or anything, but when I need some pick-me-up uh, when it's dark day out or something, and I want that freshness of apples, then uh, I would go for Greenleaf from the House of uh, Parfums de Marly. As I said, these fragrances just didn't fit in my 20 of 2020 list, so these are all honorable mentions, but I feel like these are great releases, and you guys should know about them, especially this one. This is from the House of Javoy. It didn't make my top 20, but this is 21 Conduit Street, named after the, the, the London Mayfair location of the Javoy Boutique. So this one is Rhubarb, Balsam Fir, Ambroxan, Grapefruit, Woods, Tonka, Bergamot. So in the end, it has a kind of a woodsy experience. It smells like the woods, the forest, the green greenery there with the you know the, the fir trees and things like, like pine trees and things like that but it's loads of rhubarb so there's kind of a gelatinous touch throughout the fragrance a fruity gelatinous touch and then of course uh, there's the grapefruit and ambroxan for me it lightly hints at a tigar from the house of uh, Bulgari, I'm forgetting the name. So if you like those kind of fragrances, definitely check this one out. I feel like it's a great release. It just didn't make my top 20. So that's Conduit Street from the House of Javoy. So next we're going for two different patchouli fragrances uh, that are focusing on patchouli, obviously. So this is a, another one that's under $100, but not really distributed here in the States. You might be able to order it from France. This is from a house called Nino Amadeo, and this is uh, patchouli by Nino. I just love patchouli. I just love this kind of patchouli. And so I have to include it in a list. But you know, obviously I've smelled it before, so it didn't make the top 20, 20, but definitely a great honorable mention. And this one features loads of patchouli, cacao, vanilla, amber, myrrh, saffron, sandalwood leather. So if you like fragrances like Reminiscence Patchouli because this is created by Nino Amadeo who used to be part of Reminiscence and now he's launched his own line. He's left Reminiscence and I think Reminiscence no longer is a jewelry designer so it's uh, the fragrances are separate. Either way though this is a great patchouli cakey chocolatey cacao vanilla gourmandish patchouli heavy on the earthy patchouli but also a nice contrast of the delicious vanilla chocolatey uh, gourmand touches. So that is Patchouli by Nino by Nino Amadeo. Speaking of patchouli, we're gonna go with Sticky Fingers from the house of Francesca Bianchi. Once again, a great patchouli fragrance. It's nothing like this one. Uh, you know, for me, this one has this signature Francesca Bianchi touch. You know, all of her fragrances have this kind of DNA, which I do pick up here prominently, but it's a nice contrast with loads of patchouli. So in the end, there's loads of patchouli here. There's some tobacco and then Oris Note comes in. And I feel like Oris Note comes up a lot in her fragrances and leather does come up as well. So those are this, uh, the DNA or the signature notes that come up that remind me of uh, Francesca Bianchi uh, fragrances. There's castorium, there's tonka beans, there's some cinnamon, heliotrope, and uh, sandalwood, but a beautiful patchouli, really dense and intense, uh, but not overwhelming, you know? It's, it's a great release, I really like it, and I think this is my favorite release from her uh, house. I have to compare it to some of my other favorites, but I'm really enjoying this patchouli. That is Sticky Fingers from the House of Francesca. Francesca Bianchi, a great honorable mention. So we've got two uh, vetiver fragrances back to back. I'm kind of putting them in uh, little sections. These are the two vetivers of 2020 that I really liked, but I didn't feature them in my top 20, obviously. This is Mancera's Vetiver Sensual. So obviously it's a very citric uh, vetiver fragrance, but in the Mancera style, you know, I've smelled, I've smelled vetiver fragrances that are ultra citrusy, that are very, very fresh. This one, even though it smells fresh, it acts deep and rich like other Mancera fragrances. It's not a beast like to, uh, red tobacco, which is overdose of beast beastliness, but in the end, it, it's nice. It's a nice vetiver with lots of woods, mint, uh, orchid, a lot of orange here, lots of lime, Lots of bergamot even, amber, lemons, patchouli, oak moss, lots of things going on. But as I said, it's a very, very beautiful combination of loads of citruses with vetiver and some aromatic notes. So that's Vetiver Sensual from the house of Mancera. And the second Vetiver fragrance I should highlight and uh, give credit to for launching in 2020 as an honorable mention is Caron's Abbe Moi Comme Je Suis. So this is a mouthful with the French uh, name. Sorry, I'm doing my best with pronouncing it or saying it. But either way, a great zingy 
grapefruity vetiver with hazelnuts, tonka beans, and tobacco. You know, it's not overly complex. You do definitely pick up the vetiver. You do definitely pick up the hazelnuts, but the ginger and grapefruit come in as well. So it's a nice contrast of deep notes like hazels and vetiver with a little bit more fresh notes like ginger and grapefruit. It's spicy, it's woody, it's earthy. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's beautiful. It's from Caron. It's Amemoi Comme Je Suis, uh, launched in 2020. If you don't know that one, do check it out. I think uh, it's a beautiful scent. I don't think it'll have the popularity of Caron pouring on the Caron in the end, but it's a great release, you know? So this is uh, from the House of Imaginary Authors. This is a whiff of a waffle cone. It didn't make my 2020 list, but in the end, I think it's definitely honorable mention worthy. It's a, a fragrance focusing on uh, you know, gourmand notes. And for me, it reminded me of Christmas. That's why I featured it in a Christmas fragrances video. But what's known about this one is lots of vanilla, uh, heavy cream, salted caramel, amorous, or geet, uh, cinnamon. Uh, it's a, it's a gourmand. It smells like the, well, it's supposed to smell like ice cream shop, but for me, I get the ice cream cone uh, and then also I get the ice cream with it. So it's a creamy, uh, you know, vanilla, uh, spicy, uh, ice creamy uh, gourmand fragrance with the uh, Imaginary Authors DNA in the base notes. So that's a whiff of a waffle cone from the House of Imaginary Authors. And this I should highlight. I wanted to include them in honorable mentions. I invent initially was going to feature one of them in my uh, top 20, but... I kept wearing it and it wasn't just becoming a perfect fragrance, but in the end, it's definitely honorable mention worthy. It's Milk Musk and Milk Musk uh, Eau de Parfum, Eau de Toilette Eau de Parfum from the House of Molten Brown. I just did a video about these two fragrances. Go find out more information about them. But in the end, the EDT starts off smelling great. It gets a little uh, metallic in the heart and then gets back to being a smooth and creamy fragrance. And then the, the Eau de Parfum in the end starts off very woody and then becomes a very uh, creamy woody experience. So they're different, but in the end they're kind of gourmandish and musky. Um, not overly, uh, you know, complex and not overwhelmingly in performance. They're very, very moderate performance, not screamers and things like that, but definitely cozy and gourmandish in the end. So those are Milk Musk and Milk Musk Eau de Palette and Eau de Parfum as honorable mentions. And then this one had to be featured because uh, it's a uh, one that came out later last year. It's Amouage Interlude 53. Um, I did a video about this one. Go check it out. It's a great scent. It's a uh, interlude uh, in its most uh, luxurious form. Everything is amped up uh, and uh, the, the notes are like um, more, a, a lot more, you know, intense like they scream at you more but in the end i don't find it to be like a beastly fragrance even though uh i find uh i don't find it to be a beastly fragrance i find it to be beastlier than the original but for me this particular version is the luxury version it smells better richer thicker concentrated in the end it's an extrait de parfum uh, and it's very very expensive but i feel like it's definitely worth highlighting here as a great release from 2020 even though it's a flanker that's amouage interlude 53. so if you haven't noticed this is the incense section of the video next up it's from the house of uh, louis vuitton it's nuit de faux so nuit de faux from louis vuitton is an incense leather olibanum oud musk fragrance in the end it's very very incensey it does remind remind me of a little bit of other incense fragrances uh like healy's cardinal uh casbah from uh you know i'm drawing a blank robert piguet even the incense from javoy but you know this is louis vuitton's version and i feel like it's a great release it just didn't make my top 20 uh but i feel like it's still definitely honorable mention worthy if you like that whole louis vuitton Orientals collection releases such as um, Ombre Nomad Les Sables Roses, definitely this one's worth it. So this is Louis Vuitton, Nuit de Faux, a great honorable mention. And then uh, with uh, Guerlain's Iris Toreffi, I feel like it's also an honorable mention. Didn't make my top 20 because, you know, I smelled this before. It reminds me of a uh, acidic coffee version of uh, Dior Homme Intense, you know? I've smelled Dior Rome Intense. I really love it. I love this one, but it's all about leather, iris, coffee, cardamom, bergamot, ambrette. Ambrette and iris are featured in Dior Rome Intense. So this reminds me of it. Smell it and see what you think. Vanilla, tea, amber also are featured in the notes. Um, it's supposed to be lipstick touching a coffee cup while somebody's sipping the coffee, uh, and that's what the inspiration is. So one thing that's negative about this one is it's kind of a 
acidic. It smells like there's lots of acidic coffee. That's what I get. Slightly sour, but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful scent. Just didn't make my top 20. So that's Iris Toreffi from the house of um, Guerlain. So next up, it's a fragrance I bought towards the end of last year, very, very end of last year, and I reviewed it. Uh, it's uh, from the house of Rogue Perfumery. It's Bon Monsieur. Now we're going to the Fougere section of this video. But Rogue's uh, Bon Monsieur is that very, very pungent um, lavender bombish kind of a fougere fragrance with lots of lavender, lots of fur, lots of oak moss, there's lots of geranium and sandalwood carnation, lily of the valley, cedar and rose. It's intense, it's overwhelming, it's beautiful, it's classy, it's long lasting. Not a, you know, like a screamer, but definitely a, a, a lot, longevity is great with this one. But if you like a very, very classy Indiesque uh, uh, fougere fragrance, uh, Barbershoppy Fougere fragrance and definitely Bon Monsieur is uh, one that you should check into. And again, it was a great release, just didn't make my top 20 because I've smelled fragrances like that, plenty of them, uh, and it didn't jump out to be a top 20 uh, of 2020. And speaking of Fougeres, Tom Ford's Beau de Jour is another one uh, that's really, really great. Um, I think these kind of sort of remind me of one another uh, in the end. But for me, this one's lots of lavender. It has two kinds of lavender, patchouli with rosemary, oak moss, mint, basil. So it's an herbal aromatic experience, just like the previous one. And then there's amber and ger geranium in this one as well. This one actually features the fur and um, uh, some uh, different kind of notes that are not present in here, like the carnation and the lily of the valley. Perhaps this one goes more close to smelling more like um, Fougère Royale, but I didn't think so. I think they smell more similar to one another here rather than Fougère Royale, even though that one has similar notes to Fougère Royale. In the end, this is a great Fougère. I'm glad they brought it over to this collection. Uh, it's definitely much better than Costa Azura that just came out, and I did my video yesterday. Go check that out. It's definitely worth it in this particular collection. But you know what? This is a masculine-leaning fragrance. I thought about, I'm just now realizing, um, I, don't, I don't know if it's unisex leaning or if it's a masculine. Either way though, a great release. Uh, definitely worth it here. Um, if you don't know it, check it out. It's Costa Azura. It's not Costa Azura, it's Beau de Jour from Tom Ford. This next one is from a luxury indie house called Bortnikov and this is Sayat Nova. So Sayat Nova is that very, very smoky, uh, intense, uh, oudy uh, gourmand fragrance with loads of uh, apricots, rum, vanilla. There's two kinds of oud, Laotian wood and agar wood, oak moss, narcissus, uh, magnolia. So in the end, it's gar gourmand, but it's gourmand light. In the end, it's boozy, but it's boozy light. I feel like the oud dominates here, but it's not an in-your-face oud. It's like a nice blend of the ouds with the gourmand nodes where not one is fighting with each other. It's just like a nice blend. Even though I feel like it's smoky, I think the smokiness comes from the narcissus and some of the ouds that are mentioned in here, but a beautiful scent. This is a Sayat Nova from the house of Bortnikov. If you don't know, check it out. Going to the house of Zerzhov, and this is MV Augusta. I hope this is still selling. I thought this was a great release. In the end, it's a buttery leather with, um, you know, I get violets from this one. I get iris from this one, incense, labdanum, tonka beans, musk, patchouli, ylang ylang, cloves, and bergamot. It reminds me of some classic uh, leather fragrances. So in the end, it was not one that made the top 20, but definitely honorable mention for you guys to know about. If you like leathers, um, the leathers, it reminds me of Royal English leather from Creed, um, Kanize uh, Golden Edition, Kanize 10, I think it's called. So it reminds me of those kind of uh, fragrances. I think uh, Kirk Kanaj from Dior also has that similarity, and maybe Misia from Chanel also has that similarity. Either way, though, a great leather fragrance from the house of Zerzhov, focusing on lots of buttery and uh, smooth, and uh, you know, smooth and buttery, creamy leather, which doesn't smell charred or something like a lot of leathers can go. So almost like a uh, slightly gourmand leaning to me because of the butteriness, but it doesn't act like gourmand, if that makes sense. So this is MV Augusta from the house of Zerzhov. This is a great one, but you know, I discovered it in 20, it's a 2020 release, but I, it was put out like very late 2019. So I got to smell it in 2019. I'm gonna feature it in this. And even though it's a great release, it's an honorable mention. This is Rouge Trafalgar from the house of uh, Dior. So 
Wow, it's a great fruity, musky fragrance with lots of fruits. You know, raspberries, cherries, blackcurrant, musk, patchouli, grapefruit, strawberry, mandarin. It's a fruit bomb, but it's a green fragrance. I don't see much green notes listed. It smells green to me. It smells lots of fruity. Kind of could be hinting at a little bit of fragrances like L'Ombre Down Low, but not quite uh, as green as that one, but a beautiful, beautiful, great scent. It's very, very happy and uplifting, and it's Dior's Rouge Trafalgar. If you don't know it, check it out. Next, going to the house of uh, Tom Ford, it's Rose Prick. Yeah, it's an honorable mention. I really do enjoy the scent. Um, I've come to love it even more, but definitely not top 20. Um, and again, in the end, it's slightly greenish leaning uh, rose scent. You, you're picking up the twigs and the stems of the rose, at least I am. But there's loads of roses here. So there's three kinds of roses that are credited for this one. Sichuan pepper, turmeric, patchouli, tonka beans. Uh, it's it's kind of like a sheepra to me. But a beautiful scent. I really do like it. It's different than like um, Eau Capital from uh, Diptyque uh, and um, a few other similar kind of greenish leaning uh, rose fragrances that came out around the same time. Anyway, Tom Ford's Rose Prick. It's recently featured in my Green Roses uh, fragrances video. If you haven't caught that, please do. And then last but not least, going to the house of Eccentric Molecules and it's Eccentric 5, not Molecule 5. Um, Eccentric 5 is a great release. I, I like it because it's so fresh and refreshing. I really, really do enjoy its freshness. And it's also very, very green and it focuses on loads of juniper with a uh, cypress note. But of course it's got cashmere in because Molecule 5 is well, all, ab all about cashmere in, but they've not stopped that cashmere in here with the synthetic notes they've gotten. They've added ISOE Super, they've added uh, Ambroxan as well, along with uh, Bergamot, Rosemary, Musk, and Hedione. Very, very fresh and green experience, very, very fresh and refreshing to wear in the summertime. If you like the eccentric molecules fra fragrances, you should definitely check out Molecule 5. No, I'm sorry, you should definitely check out Eccentric 5 from the House of Eccentric Molecules. And that wraps up my 21 honorable mentions for from uh, fragrances that were launched in 2020. Let me know if you are fans of these and if these made your top 10 or top 20s of 2020. And again, as I said, I can't make a top 20 and add much more. So I wanted to do this video in parts. So this is the second part. And I'm doing a third part as well. Stay tuned for those. And I might actually extend it to a fourth part. I'm going to do one of my 2020 discoveries of fragrances that I'd never sampled before uh, previously. So anything that was launched previous to 2020 that I, I discovered in 2020, I'm going to do a separate video. So stay tuned for that. I'm not sure if it's going to be a top 20 or if it's going to be a 10, but we'll be doing that in the near future. But let me know what you think about these fragrances. Were they great fragrances to you? Were they more of a top 10 or top 20 rather than an honorable mention? Let me know what you think, or maybe you hate these fragrances. Put some comments down so I can find out. Either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Otherwise, please like this video. Please share it follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.